Today I want to cover quickly yet another study that talks about the importance of your gut microbiome and its impact on your global physiology. This study specifically is talking about your microbiome and its relationship to your sleep-wake cycles. And this was just published in the journal Scientific Reports a couple weeks ago in November. And the authors of the study were looking at mice and what they wanted to do is deplete the mice or the mouse's gut microbiome and observe for changes in sleep quality in uh, sleep wake cycle architecture and neurotransmitters, et cetera. So the title of the study is called gut microbiota depletion by chronic antibiotic treatment alters the sleep wake architecture and sleep EEG power spectra in mice. Big mouthful to say giving antibiotics wrecks the gut microbiome. Now that's not news to anybody on this call and probably not news to anyone anywhere really. Most people understand that taking antibiotics impacts your GI tract and most people nowadays or anyone reading health blogs understands that the gut microbiome is key to health. If you've read my book, you understand that as well. Um, and basically, the, some of the most common things that cause dysbiosis or kill off the good bugs in our gut are antibiotics. They're used everywhere um, from a pharmaceutical standpoint from our doctor's offices to uh, feed for our livestock, which then you know, makes its way down the food chain into us. So antibiotics taken orally or through the foods we're eating or the liquids we're consuming. And then alcohol is a big one as well. And there's many others, of course. Glyphosate is one too, which is sprayed on all of our food. Um, so if you dive in here, the abstract says, dysbiosis of the gut microbiome affects physiological processes, including brain functions, by alter altering the intestinal metabolism. And so these authors, like I said, want to expose mice to antibiotics. So they gave them broad spectrum antibiotics for four weeks with the purpose of depleting their gut microbiota. Okay, so if there's anyone out there that wasn't aware that antibiotics deplete your gut microbiome, this study, the authors used it to purposely deplete the gut microbiome of these mice in order to observe for changes in their health, specifically their sleep. So after four weeks of just dropping pharmaceutical nukes in there, the gut microbiome was depleted. And what they found was this caused significant variations in the metabolism of amino acids, specifically tryptophan and tyrosine, the precursors to serotonin and dopamine, and also affected vitamins, specifically vitamin B6, which is involved in neurotransmission or involved in brain function. And so decreasing dopamine metabolites and serotonin metabolites and vitamin B6 all can impact sleep, all can impact uh, psychology. So could promote anxiety or depression, could promote headache or migraine, could promote uh, perseveration or the inability to shut the mind off at night when you're trying to fall asleep. So antibiotic use may drive sleep issues. They also went the next step and ran EEGs on the mice to look at brain waves and look at REM sleep and non-REM sleep. And they found that the mice that took the antibiotics had significantly less time in non-rapid eye movement sleep during light phases and spent more time in non-rapid eye sleep and rapid eye sleep during dark phase. So we don't have to dive into that other than saying that the sleep-wake cycle was dysfunctional and the, the sleep wasn't as restful or healing as it should be, which can lead to anything from anxiety to early death. So if we scroll down into the body of the study, they were studying the microbiota gut brain axis, right? In my book, The Autoimmune Answer, I talk about the gut brain axis and the microbiota gut brain axis and its impact in human health. This study is yet another animal study reinforcing that. And it says dysbiosis of the gut microbiota leads to impairment of brain functions such as memory formation, cognitive function, mental health, and circadian rhythms. 
And we've covered those things in previous videos on my YouTube channel here. And I'll refer you to this 2019 study titled Sleep and Inflammation, Partners in Sickness and Health. And I've covered this in multiple videos because it's important in so many things, but relevant, especially relevant to sleep for today's call and to antiviral capacity for uh, the, the, the COVID issue going on. So you can see here, this one graphic talks about pathways linking chronic stress to sleep disturbance and adverse outcomes. Um, and the sleep disturbance leads to decreased sleep time, decreased sleep efficiency, which drives chronic inflammation, which disturbs sleep architecture and promotes worse antiviral defenses. So promotes viral infection. And so that's, that's all for today. We'll keep it quick, but essentially what the key points I want you to understand is that this study on purpose used antibiotics to deplete the gut microbiome, okay? So anytime we're gonna use antibiotics, we want to be cognizant of the potential impacts beyond killing whatever bacteria we're trying to kill. Could it negatively impact our global physiology? So there's a right time and place for medications, absolutely. And we wanna consider whether or not we wanna take it, what dose for how long, is it a systemic antibiotic? Is it just a localized antibiotic? Um, that sort of thing. So that was one. Then they found depleting those microbiota changes levels of tryptophan, serotonin, vitamin B6. Those things are needed for sleep. Those things are needed um, for multiple body functions. So this shows the importance of our microbes for tryptophan metabolism for cognitive function and for sleep health. So what questions do we have, if any, about this topic? Was this a, like a mainstream kind of study or a, um, more of a, from a natural perspective, or does that matter? Like who, who does these studies like this? Well, this, this one was in Scientific Reports, which is a, a pretty well-known journal. It's a part of Nature. Nature is one of the best uh, or most well-respected research journals on the planet. And uh, specifically the University of Tsukuba, somewhere in Japan, did this. Um, so yeah, this is this is this is mainstream research in terms of the gut microbiome is one of the hottest topics and has been for nearly a decade, right? So no one, no one, or I should say, no one should, you know, kind of brush off microbiome research anymore because um, if they are, they just haven't been up to date in the last decade or so. <clears throat> so yeah, this isn't this isn't fringe research. This is this should be you know, accepted by everybody. Now, implementing it into care is a different story. I think the statistic in school, at least, is new research takes 17 years to make it into textbooks. Um, so, you know, there's, there's that delay. So I'm trying to bring it to you guys so you can benefit right now. And anyone who's watching the channel, of course. Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, I am just curious, like, how well known this is. Like sometimes I, I, I feel like it's getting more out there, even just in, you know, among my friends or whatever. Um, but do even doctors really know or do they take it seriously? Maybe they're just so wedded to the antibiotic thing and the big pharma thing. Yeah, I mean, different. Of course, there's a spectrum in everything. So there's some doctors that have no clue about this. And there's some doctors that can prescribe and don't prescribe because they're all into this, you know, so that there's going to be a spectrum and that's up to us to interview and find the doctors that work for us uh, or think along the lines that we want to be um, thinking on. So yeah, it's out there. This study, I mean, this was published November 11th. So not this this one specifically probably isn't well known yet but again 
this study was from 2019 and this covers sleep this covers sleep in depth and um poor sleep and inflammation and all of that so <coughs> excuse me the the importance of sleep to global health is is not even close to new so there's no excuse for not understanding that um unless you're you know you just say hey you know I'm a pediatrician. Why do I need to know about sleep? I just take care of strep throat and ear infections, you know, and unfortunately we know that's not the correct way to think about it, but especially if you're a prescriber, you're supposed to give informed consent and know benefits, risks, and alternatives, right? And the risk of an antibiotic, this study shows is, and many show is uh, dysbiosis. And now this study shows and another risk of an antibiotic would be dysbiosis induced wow. sleep deprivation, right? So it's, you know, it's all relevant. It's just how deep are people going to go? Who else? So the gut microbiome depletion in this article here, it's just with chronic antibiotic treatment. Yep. But all of the outcomes that you were talking about um, could just be, even if your gut microbiome was depleted, not from antibiotics, just from eating poorly or whatever, does it still have the same, uh, it seems like it would have the same anxiety, um, you know, all of the things that you mentioned, I think it was on the second page, I usually wear glasses. I'm sorry, yeah. guys, these are not prescriptions. So I'm having a hard time seeing, but um, yeah. uh, so it, there is, there's gotta be something, not even just with antibiotics wrecking your gut, but just with your gut not being right or leaky gut, because um, I know firsthand when I um, had the beginnings of, I didn't know what it was, and it was the beginnings of IBS. It's the more my gut got out of whack, the more anxious I got. And in turn, the more healthier my gut got, the less generalized anxiety I got. Yep. So, and I wasn't on antibiotics. So right. um, there's, there's a big big connection 100 um, percent. basically you just you know you just laid out for us the gut brain axis right so the more your ibs got worse the more anxious you got and the more anxious you got the more your gut got worse right and then you know so the gut brain axis and not and uh i believe it was Oh, when was it 1892 or it's in my book um the the james parkinson the, the man whose namesake is parkinson's disease he said we can't prove it right now but parkinson's is likely due to gut issues so way back then he understood that we couldn't scientifically prove it yet but we've known about gut brain brain gut loop on some level for over 100 years the microbiome aspect is the new part for us, but that basically snaps into the gut, right? Um, and, and can impact brain as well, and brain can impact that. So your question is very profound, and the answer is no, it doesn't have to be an antibiotic that quote unquote messes up the gut. Anything, alcohol, glyphosate, uh abuse okay you could start this this loop up at the brain right so if you have chronic stress because you were abused or some or or head injury concussion or whatever you know that's enough to get this started and then that leads to you know intestinal permeability or leaky gut now things are getting in that shouldn't shifts your microbiome which feeds back here and we start the loop you could start it at either end um, or perhaps, you know, you were a C-section baby, so you never went through the vaginal canal, never got that first inhalation of mom's microbes, and you weren't breastfed, and you were formula fed, and, you know, you, you were raised in a home that thought everything should be sterile and don't play in dirt and do any of that. Well, you never seeded your microbiome properly then at that point, 
and maybe started life behind the eight ball, you know, all the way back from there. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's uh, the possible combinations or, or contributing factors to it are infinite. That's funny you should say about dirt. I was looking at something and um, there are people out there who actually eat dirt. Yeah. I mean, you have to be really careful, but they eat dirt because our food is so washed beyond whatever uh, that we're missing all that yeah. when you pull it from the ground and you're, you're getting all that. So yeah, there are dirt eaters out there. Yeah, there's, there's a book called An Epidemic of Absence and it's written by a guy with um, uh, alopecia universalis, which is an autoimmune disease that just eliminates all hair from your body. And he was doing like an investigative journalism piece on, um, he had heard that people purposely eat parasites and worms because, you know, humans co-evolved with them. And so he, he said, he goes through the book and says that the hygiene hypothesis or, you know, wash your hands after you touch every doorknob, wash your counter, spray your house. Like his premise is that the hygiene hypothesis is driving the explosion of autoimmune diseases because we're killing off all the microbes that we've co-evolved with. Right. So not just bacteria, but there's certain parasites and worms that are commensals and we're all full of viruses. You know, we didn't need COVID to know that. Um, but we, we, we should be a microbial soup. So the more sterile we are, the more we avoid dirt, the more we're chronically washing our hands. Um, that has an impact on our immune system because wiping out these microbes changes all kinds of communication and symbiotic relationships we have with these guys. And so in that book, he walks through research that, that discusses, um, that has looked at children and children raised on farms have far far, far, far less allergies, asthma, uh, food reactions, EpiPen moments, because what are they doing? They're in dirt and dust. They have dogs and horses and they're, ex they're exposed to all these things, right? Whereas if you're raised in a city in a high rise, you know, condo, you don't have any of that stuff. And so those people have more asthma, allergies, that sort of thing, because their immune systems weren't exposed to so many antigens like a kid on a farm. So yeah, it, it's, it's really interesting. And that leads to the, the field of research again that I, I talk about in my book um, called the exposome. And the exposome is essentially all of your exposures from conception forward have an impact on your health and disease. So, you know, mom and dad's health at conception matters epigenetically, you know, were you full term? What was mom's nutrition while you were in utero? What were her stress levels while you were in utero and her chemical exposures? You know, were you vaginal birth, C-section birth, breastfed, bottle fed, you know, playing dirt, not playing dirt, all of these things, they all matter all the way up to today. So, um, and many of those exosome factors impact microbiome and um, they all impact your epigenome, which is you know, the environmental impact on your genetic expression. So yeah, fun stuff. Yeah, I am concerned about what's going to happen, uh, like what the fallout's going to be with all the hand sanitizer right now. And uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's another book, what's it called? Uh, Missing Microbes. And that's written, I believe, by a medical doctor. I'm forgetting his name right now, but he talks about antibiotic winter. And basically what antibiotic winter is, is, you know, we're so, we're so inundated with antibiotic exposure through, you know, oral antibiotics, through antibiotics in our feedlots and all of that, that we're creating superbugs like MRSA uh, and those sorts of things. And so he says that there are, there's, there's going to come a day, A, we're not creating any new antibiotics, okay? So there's, we're limited in what we have. And then B, each day goes by, we're create, getting closer and closer. We're creating more and more superbugs that are antibiotic resistant. So, um, you know, there's gonna be a day where we have an antibiotic winter, potentially, where we have this microbe, this bacterium that's infecting us and it's resistant to all our antibiotics. Well, then what do we do, right? So, 
Um, again, it's we want to be judicious with the use of it, which we haven't been as humans, and and so that when we do need it, it can potentially work for us. But then at the same time, we don't want to always run to antibiotics because it's good to challenge our immune system and build those muscles with things like chicken pox and flu and strep and things that you know are relatively benign if you're healthy. Yeah, and um, on the positive side, Zach Bush says to diversify your microbiome as much as you can. Mm -hmm. um, like even going like, and especially now it's really important. I try to get the kids with as many, as many different kids as we can, you know, yeah. with the restrictions and stuff, but also we're getting with more like dogs and horses. And then he says to like, try to go out in nature to like as many different places as you can, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just expose, get exposed. You know, like you said, to lots of plants, lots of food, lots of pets, lots of people. <clears throat> Exposure is what makes us strong, right? That's why you don't, you don't only do bicep curls or you don't only lift weights. You want to also do some cardio. You want to also climb. You know, you want to do things that puts demand from all different angles and stresses, not only on your muscles, bones, and joints, but on your immune system because then you'll be more cross-trained for whatever comes next. 